for Terry Marsh. Hopefully for him uh, maintaining an unbeaten record now in the new like, World Away champion. 17 fights with only one draw on that one against Lloyd Christie, Errol's elder brother. And Peter Eubanks, fresh from a very good win over Joe Frazier Jr., that you might have seen on ITV from Gateshead. And, of course, he's the only guy who got a decision over Barry McGuigan, the featherweight champion. And the form book points to the fact that, well, he could give uh, the champion all the trouble he can handle. Although, on record, Eubanks has actually lost more than he's won in 21 fights, but don't be misguided by that, because... He's always fought good class, he's had close contests, but recently really come to the front now. Had to call off this fight when he was road running in Brighton and uh, slipped and almost unbelievably in the same road, almost the same spot where Steve Ovet uh, met his trouble. So it's all the Marsh fan club here at Shoreditch, obviously, half the fire force it would seem from Basildon although he assures me that there's plenty of guys there in case there's any trouble back home to deal with it and win lose or draw now with Terry Marsh he's back on the fire surface at six tomorrow morning and he says my pals have got a sweatshirt made says you may be champ but you still have to make the tea gets off fast Marsh now he won in this ring after he won the championship from Clint McKenzie. He looked very good doing that. But the makings of an interesting match, Jim. Yeah, this is a good match. Uh, I'm sorry, the last time this match was made, it was called off again. I've been looking forward to this match for quite some time. Uh, Marsh doesn't have the power to upset Eubanks, and Eubanks is never in a bad fight. So uh, I think that these two factors will make for a real exciting fight tonight. Dust spray coming up from the ring is actually rosin dust that they had to put in there. The fighters have been having trouble slipping on the preliminary fights. But uh, hopefully the dust will settle with half a minute to go in the opening round. take his time a bit Jim in the opening round but uh, having won against an American here late last year and looking so good I suppose he wants to get off right away and stamp a bit of authority yeah well, I think I think he's, he's trying to change his style but I think he has the name for being cautious a nice ball a nice mover I think he's trying to make himself more aggressive but uh, we don't want him uh, to become foolhardy so there he is deep in thought as always very sharp witted guy Terry Marsh and uh, Ernie Fossey there, trainer in the ring with him. And uh, as he says, he likes, likes to win for the lads from Basildon in Essex. Actually boxed out of Stepney in London as an amateur, so he always says I'm from Basildon and Stepney. Boxed 122 professional rounds. Now, there they are, the lads in there trying to spread that rust, rosin dust over now. To, they're almost like boxing in the fog. So Peter Eubanks there with Jack Pook, the manager, a taxi driver from Brighton. Well, that Marshall landed more punches in the opening round, so he pinched that one OK. But Eubanks in the trade terms is what they call a nobbings fighter where they have often been known to throw money in the ring after his fights and excitement of course he'll, he'll keep battling away Marsh a bit of a chess player so he'll, he'll bide his time and probably make the right moves because the manager of Gene Hatcher the current WBA champion at this weight is actually at ringside he also manages Don Curry who's fighting Colin Jones of course on Saturday and he's here to take sights on Marsh, so probably Marsh wants to look good, but perhaps not too good in case he doesn't get the fight.
champion draws on so much amateur experience. He, he won everything that was going except the Olympic Games because he didn't go to Moscow, and as a serviceman, he couldn't anyway. Ex-Marine Commando. So, if he has to pull it up, the strength and courage from his boots, he can always do that. He might have come a bit late in life, well, not really late at 26, but he's certainly making his mark, Marsh, isn't he? Yeah, well, I can see a tremendous improvement since he's won the title. I think the confidence he has is that it's making him stand his ground more. He's punching a lot heavier. He'll never be a knockout puncher, but uh, he's punching a lot stronger, a lot more authority in his work. I can see an improvement just in the last couple of fights. In fact, he stopped three of opponents, plus one disqualification of his 17. But as Jim says, he wouldn't be called a one-punch hitter, but sometimes he throws a few tasty clusters of punches. Uh, that was a nice combination there. Left hook and right hand to follow by Marsh. Also, Jim, I agree, since he's won the championship, he just seems to stand that little half a step nearer to opponents now. He's not using the ring as much as he did. Yeah, he's moving in with his punches now, whereas before he was looking to land and then maybe get out of trouble again. But now he's uh, moving in with the punch and he's getting that little bit of extra power and snap into his punches. I can really see an improvement. around the nose there where the manager's got to try and earn his percentage but uh, he's, he's certainly fired Peter Eubanks up uh, since he came under his managership this taxi driver from Brighton electrician by trade actually born in Manchester let's have a look at replay there now we see this combination coming in I think from Marsh here that I mentioned, there it is, just the left hook, and he doubled it and turned it, and then as he saw Eubanks going away, clipped him with the right hand as well. So the final run down there, and uh, the words of wisdom he hopes there, young Peter Eubanks, 22. <laughs> Round three. this light world of weight contest the weights are not announced so long as they're within the 10 stone two poundage uh, that's an old-fashioned move in boxing if the champion gets knocked out while he's at the actual championship weight even in a non-title fight they technically could take the title away from him so they they don't disclose the weight so in fact marsh is probably boxing at championship weight of 10 stone certainly become a thinking fighter Jim Marsh yeah it certainly is there's sometimes when a when a counter punching boxer tries to change his style to become more aggressive he starts making mistakes and gets gets caught with uh, some silly punches well it hasn't happened to Marsh he's made a couple of mistakes he gets tied up inside now and again but uh, I think he'll get it all together The referee, the referee found it amusing. I'm not sure Eubanks would agree with that sense of humour, Larry O'Connell. But uh, Larry boxed in top class when he was an amateur, including one of your countrymen, Jim Dick McTaggart. Just imagine if Eubanks could try and come on strong or get lucky, perhaps, uh, Jim. What a win double if he got it over McGuigan and Marsh. Nobody would have believed that. Yeah, not half a lot. This is a difficult uh, type of fight for Marsh because there's nothing to gain, whereas Eubanks has everything to gain. And I've never seen Eubanks run out of steam. 
See, so right, right towards the end. Marshall have to be in good, good shape to keep him at bay. See, he'll keep steaming in Eubanks. As I say, he doesn't always win decisions, but he always wins applause. Half a minute to go in the third. So here's Jim Rosenthal talking to Dave Gorman, the manager of champions Gene Hatcher and Don Curry. Dave, your face haven't given too much away. What are your thoughts about Terry Marsh? Well, uh, after uh, three rounds, what I see is he's a very good technician, uh, has good hand speed, moves around pretty well. I surprised that Eubanks uh, looks like uh, he's a bit stronger, but he doesn't seem to be able to back him up. It'd be, it'd be interesting to see. Uh, what Hatcher could do with him. I think Hatcher's a stronger puncher, but but Terry shows a lot of ability with his hand speed, and he's uh, he's a technical fighter, pretty much an upright fighter, but uh, he shows uh, a lot of good things in him. Fifth round, then. And the champion, the 10 stone, Terry Marsh. Having to fight more or less for every point, realizing that Eubanks always going to be in there willing to swap punches. And a really good sort of experienced fight for Marsh, who's now in the top ten of the world rankings, having dethroned Clinton McKenzie, who was then in the rankings. And uh, genuinely has got a very good chance now of sealing a match against Gene Hatcher to take place in this country. So that's something that promoter Frank Warren has got to be working on but if Hatcher's manager has taken the trouble to come to see him here it uh, must be in the stockpile Hatcher was talking about making a defense in South Africa but they've got one or two loopholes there apparently uh, that they may not be able to fill sheer point scoring of course Jim Marsh ahead yeah yeah Marsh is ahead all right there Hugh Banks uh, called off their last meeting uh, because of a damaged rib. I thought maybe Mars would have had that in mind and maybe thrown some stuff down the stairs, but he's really he's been sticking to the head for most of the time. Yes, it's all a bit of upstairs, downstairs in this game. He's a bit stocky, Jim. He's probably finding it just that bit harder to get the body punches in. Yeah, that's possible. As you know only too well, of course, if he, if he throws punches and catches Eubanks' elbows, he could do a bit of damage that way. As you see there, he tucked his elbows in well, Eubanks. So there's a minute to go in the fifth. And the pattern been a bit the same, and uh, Eubanks bloodied around the nose, but that's all. No problem. It's always good to see a home fighter getting a chance with a champion. Jim, it uh, sometimes gets a bit tiring bringing in imports from Mexico's and the USA. This fellow's good enough for anybody at his weight. Yeah, well, as I said earlier, Hugh Banks has never been in a bad fight. If he has, I've never seen it. And it's turning, it's turning out to be the kind of fight we expected. Uh, Marsh is scoring the points, but Hugh Banks making it difficult all the time. So Marsh fancied he's got him on the hook a bit there, and he's going to lay into him. He's hanging on for dear life with 15 seconds to go of this round. And there's Marsh's fireman and fan club friends there. Trying to cheer him on, but he knows all about smothering to get out of trouble there, Eubanks. And was about to walk to the wrong corner, but being shepherded back OK. So 
let's have a look at the replay there then, Jim. This is at the point now where he just got him on the hook, look. Yeah, that, this is a nice burst from Marsh. This is the first time he's really got on top of Eubanks. He landed some nice punches, a little bit untidy, but the punches were getting through there, he goes to the body. And uh, it's the first time we've actually seen Eubanks a little bit distressed. And the first time, in fact, that Marsh has really pummeled away at the body. We were only talking about that a minute before. I love that friendly pat on the cheek there that the champion gets from uh, trainer Ernie Fossey. So out for the seventh. And Jim Watney did say actually from the start that he did have the making certainly of a long distance fight, if not a full distance one, because that's the form of Eubanks. Matter of fact, I can hear the American Dave Gorman just behind me saying, yes, this boy Marsh has got a good jab. In fact, Gene Hatch is of a style similar, really, to Eubanks. I mean, obviously, a bit more power in the punches. And what's he he's calling him on, isn't he, Eubanks? Jim? Yeah, he's probably getting a little bit frustrated now. He's been trying to land punches, but he never lands consecutively. I think he's maybe just a little bit frustrated now. for is that he doesn't slip his identical twin brother in the ring with him and do a ringer on us there Eubanks he really is incredibly Eubanks is actually trying to call the referee's attention I think Reg I saw there's something wrong with his glove or his hand I don't know he seemed to be looking at the referee well he could over stop there. surely and tell the referee but he hasn't done so we haven't got a we haven't got a Henry Cooper and Muhammad Ali glo split glove uh, position here no I don't think so Maybe he's complaining about you misuse of the thumb, eh? Maybe that, think. yeah, maybe, maybe it was that, I don't know. We'll maybe find out at the end of the round. <laughs> so a minute to go in the seventh round then. Marsh realising he just can't afford to be reckless with this fellow, but just standing off a bit now, biding his time. Mind you, we did criticise Marsh for going in a bit reckless, we thought, against Clint McKenzie in the final round, but he claims that now, and I believe him, that that's the pattern he was going to fight. He said, I only did it because I could more or less count the minutes to the end, and I had to be in there throwing punches. There's no point in running away. Oh, yes, he's made those count. He took his time, but when he decided to unleash them, they were okay. And then we got this rope trick trouble. He's good at this, Eubanks. Yeah, there's uh, almost a bit of limbo dancing coming in there from the Brightonian. Get him in untidy. Referee's got to keep really on top of this. He went that away, Eubanks. He keeps going the wrong corner. It just cut and bruised around the right eye there. I think that was what he was complaining about, that he must have caught him with the thumb, Jim. And uh, I, I don't certainly didn't seem intentional because that's not Marsh's game at all. But he's calling the referee over now. And it looks as though they might be retiring. And uh, Larry O'Connell saying, you stay there and let me have a look at it. What's the problem? And he's been cut on the right eyelid. And it looks that it's all over. So that was what the trouble was. It was very difficult to spot at the end of the seventh there. And you can see the swelling around Peter Eubank's right eye. Marsh always on top, always in command. But it's a pity that it had to happen for Eubanks like that because he's always been a willing fighter. But he just sort of ran out in that last round, Jim, as though we knew something was wrong, and that was the reason. Yeah, yeah, it was a good performance from Eubanks. He made the fight of all the way through, and then nobody can complain. I think maybe he's having trouble with his vision, maybe a bit of double vision there, maybe his eyes blubbed. So he's done the right thing. Why